Listen to me. Listen to me right here. Daddy, you're sending him outside? No, all right? You're going to go hide in the basement, and you're not going to come out for anybody, all right? Okay. You got that. You're a good boy. All right, go, go. You just gave our son a gun. You want to tell me what the hell we're doing? We're going to fight. Working with Jason Bloom again after Sinister, is he becoming somebody who, when he calls, you're interested, you are you want to see the material, you know he's at least going to bring you something to, to chew on? Well, here's the funny thing that a lot of people don't know is that Jason has been having this tremendous success with Paranormal Activity and Sinister and Insidious and all these different, you know, I mean, he's kind of brought back the genre movie. But he and I have been friends since we were about 20 years old. We started a theater company um, called Malapart when we were kids. And um, then he started working for Miramax and he produced my film of Hamlet. So we've known each other a long time and I've watched him kind of run this parallel path and where he found his own voice as a producer and found his thing. So he's always been that for, he's always somebody I've wanted to work with. It's awesome. We, I've, been, I've been working on him to do one of these movies. Um, he's not a big, you know, he doesn't like horror movies. Um, he'll be the first person to tell you that. And he uh, was very resistant. And I said how much fun we have, how it's total creative control, like all these things that would, he would really would like. The movies are about character and great acting and all the things that he didn't, and a lot of people don't associate with horror movies. And, and he finally said yes to Sinister. And, uh, and we just had a ter we had a great time working on it. You can you can talk to him about it. And he he loved doing the movie so much. He's like, this is great. Let's do another one. And so I gave him the purge. But you're right. It's been a culmination of uh, of us doing a lot of different things. And and our we've been very close for a long long time. He seems like he's he's figured out the right model. And now it's just if you can work within that size, you can have a lot of freedom to try almost anything. It's a funny thing. It's a certain kind of movie. Like if you take Sinister for example. That, I really like that movie. I'm very proud of that movie. And I think if you want to see a scary movie on Friday night, if you want to see be told a ghost story, Sinister's a great ghost story. But here's the thing about that movie. If you had $100 million to make that script, it wouldn't be any better. And that's, that's Jason's model. It's movies that rest on an idea. and a, They don't need money. Sinister is not made or... It's make, made or broken on how well it's done, executed. And... The thing about The Purge is this is a movie that has a very subversive socio-political undertone. It's not um, a horror movie the way that Sinister, it's not a ghost story. Right. This is a, I don't know what you call it, a sci-fi thriller, uh, a sci-fi horror movie. It's got a big um, buy-in up front. It's yeah. got a, a big, big it's idea. Huge. It's much more kind of along the lines of the old school John Carpenter independent action films. Escape from New York had a big, big idea yeah. behind it. Um, and. And so, but it's fun. Um, and it's in it not having $120 million to blow up the world and create a futuristic society where everybody's like, you know, the Jetsons or something like that. It actually becomes more interesting film by its limitations because the future looks a lot like the present. And it's, it helps you see what the film is really about. And it's just as scary, I mean, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, there's something about those restrictions that make it more scary. The lead of this movie is really Lena Headey. That my character, in a lot of ways, is an interesting character, but he's the one who has a real journey because he kind of discovers that he's one of the bad guys, which is a strange thing to discover about yourself and a very difficult thing to discover. And it's an interesting character for me. But Lena, in a lot of ways, is the hero of the movie. She's the lioness ruling over the roost. And I really love her character, and I think she's, her performance is what uh, connects the movie and makes it worth watching. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit HitFix.com.